één, dus geen probleem. Ze doen nog altijd goed op het schema. Uh, Tom Johnson gaat vandaag hebben over special game situations. Last second, place enzovoort. En ik denk dat hij heel wat stof heeft om jullie mee te nemen. Goed dan Tom. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so, so today what I wanted to, to discuss, you know, firstly is just the importance of, you know, good offense. Part of good offense is, you know, simulating these situations. I, I'm, I'm not sure how much time you spend with your teams in terms of practicing and rehearsing um, game situations. Um, and it's important. It's important, and, and you know, even from the beginning. Uh, when you're scripting your, your, your offense, your man offense, your offensive plays, within the first two or three weeks with your team, we, we spend 10 to 12 minutes at the end of practice already rehearsing and scripting different situations. Not all of the situations, but we start building it up. Um, you know, in games that, are, games that are close, you know, teams need to know how to react and respond in last two minutes quarters, last two minutes of the game, last three minutes, they need to know how to respond and so that they can be, they can react and be confident and, um, you know, you can make, make appropriate plays, you know, in these situations. Okay. You know, I look at, um, uh, and if you watch the NBA Finals, uh, I, I was working in, in Frankfurt you know, a few years ago with Gordy Herbert and he was working the summer development camps with San Antonio Spurs years ago, and you know he was talking about how um, Greg Popovich was was really really the best at you know from his experience and being around NBA teams at, at practicing and rehearsing these things. So they do a lot of I mean it helps to have really smart players. Obviously they've got a lot of guys with Parker and Ginobili. These guys can make plays. You know that's just natural talent. But I think um, you know he created two three minute scenarios. You know, you, you may not have timeouts. You know, you may not have timeouts to use, utilize. Your players need to know how to react, respond, time and score situations, up by five with two minutes left, down by seven, whatever. Teams, so what he would do, he would just create scenarios with different scores, and they play three-minute games. Maybe in one scenario, they have one timeout. Maybe one scenario, they have one more team foul to give you know, before bonus. But he would rehearse these things and he would change the parameters of this constantly. And I think this is important too. So it's okay to script this, but we'll script it and we just go like, I would just be like, you know, scores 90, 97, you know, 94, two seconds left. And maybe at, this is just static, probably at the end, not part of a, a scrimmage. This is the evolution. So we would play five minute games or three minute games and you play one and two point, for example, and at the end of that three or five minutes, maybe the score is nine six, and then we would put one minute on the, I'll put one minute on the clock. And I'll say, okay, we got one, both teams got one team foul to give before the bonus. And then we play, okay, with officiating. And then the players then have to, have, have to react and know <coughs> what to do. Know that if they're, if they're behind that, you know, you may need to foul, you know, use, use appropriate foul, appropriate situation, but then also as the, as the time starts getting down, that when you have last possession um, or when you have under 10 situ situation or under five situation, that your team knows how to, how to react and respond. Um, and, and, you know, I don't think, I think you want to keep it really simple. I think you want to have, obviously, your skilled players, you want to put them in situations on the floor where they can make plays and they make something happen and give them the confidence and the, and the other, other players as part of that execution know that they have a job and that those jobs are really important, okay? Um, and teaching points. So the first thing is deployment. So what you want to do is, is getting players quickly to the spots on the floor so no floating around. You know that, how that happens sometimes? Happens offensively and defensively. I'm like, you as a coach, you're sitting there, and you, and you know what's happening, and you're like, you're, you're, you want, you know, you're getting a little nervous, and you start give feedback. You want players, when it's dead ball situation, you know, that they are quickly deployed. People get to their spots, and then you're ready to, it's quick to the spots, 
slow, and then you're executing at, at game speed, full speed. Okay. Yeah. Normally, there's only two voices for, that, that should be heard at that time, so you don't have three or four guys talking, you know, head coach and normally the point guard. Normally the point guard, okay? So that there's no confusion and that things get set up in terms of the organization and then we're off and running. And everyone has to be disciplined enough to listen to those voices and quickly get to spots. Um, spacing and timing. You know, a lot of times, you know, you know, last possession situations, um, you have, you know, your best player with his ball in his hands, and then everyone else is static. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you some actions today um, where everyone's involved. I think it's really important to occupy the defense, to have movement. I, lo I like the ball screen, but I don't like the ball screen if there's just people are just stationary and static off of it. So we try to get a situation where everyone is moving, and so you know, and you keep it simple. So you open up. You know, you, you have to figure out where are the best operational zones for your skilled players, and then you try to, with these special plays, obviously you want them to have the ball in those operational areas, or I call them operational zones, and the best places to go one-on-one, -on -one, their best spots to shoot the ball, right? I think all these things you have to think about when you, when you run your plays, and you design your plays. Um, and then the third thing is the read, react, and attack, okay? It's just like you know, basic fundamental philosophy of offense. And you gotta teach your players how to react against different defensive deployment. So you gotta simulate that. You gotta like actually just put that in front of them and then give them options. Defense does this, defense does that. And also the individual disruptions, what's happening individually. People taking away a strong hand. And you know, how do we react with this? So I think these things are, you know, as part of your method teaching it's important that you that you're doing this with with these situations with your players and your team okay um so because i want to get through there's 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 a lot of situations that i'd love to get through but i don't know how many we're gonna get so we'll just get through um you know the longer actions at the beginning so what we're going to do we'll look at a um uh, dead ball situation backcourt sideline out of bounds maybe there's eight or ten seconds left there's high pressure, you know, so, you know, we work on our press break from the baseline. There may be a situation on the sideline, backcourt, at 8, 10 seconds. How many times are you thinking about something from that situation? High pressure, right? And you've got to relieve, you've got to have a little bit of a press breaker into, into an action with 8 to 10, 10 seconds left. Okay, so this, um, last possession against man-to-man. -man. This will be probably the longest action, and this is good. I wanted to show you something because... A lot of teams would just go one, can go one four low, create some space. You got the ball with your best offensive threat, you know, on the split line facing the rim, and then you go. I'm going to show you something where there's a lot more involved. So all players will be involved, lots of options, and something you can, it may be interesting for you to look at. Okay. Um, last possession, you come out of a timeout, team plays, you know, deploys a, a two three zone. You know, maybe straight zone or, or a matchup situation or a 1-2-2 two, two or a 3-2 zone. How do you react to that? And the worst thing you can do when you come out of a timeout, you've got a man-to-man -man action to show a zone. What do you do? The worst thing you want to do, you don't want to be static. You don't want to be, you know, just not moving. Okay, so I'll just show you an easy action, basic action that you can do against this. Um, then we'll go into the sideline out of bounds and baseline out of bounds. So a couple situations, you need a three-point shot. Um, uh, maybe a situation where it's, you need a two-point shot, a quick lob look. Um, and then on the baseline, we'll look at um, some quick hitters under two seconds and, and if a team deploys his own defense. And on the baseline, you know, teams won't deploy a 3-2 or a 1-2-2. Two, two. They'll have to go 3-3 th three, three flat along the baseline. Normally, if they deploy a zone on the baseline of the bounds, it's a two, it's a two-three zone. So we'll just—I'll show you a simple action where you can maybe get it, you know, some easy, easy looks, some easy baskets there. And maybe a couple other things, but I don't know. It depends how 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 we get through. Maybe the, I think the first three. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, we'll go we'll go right into the actions then. Can I get that five. 
So offensive end, defensive backward here, ball. Okay. One by point guard taking the ball out of bounds. Okay, we'll call this quick. Okay, eight to ten seconds left. Got a four man here, five man up here. You just get to the hash mark, even with the hash mark. Want my three man in the corner. Okay, just just on the get to uh, so the corner and step up to where the bend is. Just where the bend is on the arc. Yeah, that spot right there. Yeah, it's okay there. Okay. Where's my two man? Come on. Where's my two? Are you the two? You just went. You just went over it. Now, already you guys. Okay, you go. You go. You go there. Okay. okay. He's better shooter, so I'll put him. Put him here. Okay. Step back the way over here. Four over here. Okay. Point guard. Maybe high pressure. Okay. Ten seconds left. Okay. And you start here. Yeah, but you know, probably they pick up here. So we'll take take our best ball handler, most creative player. We'll take him out of bounds. So there's no over. So it won't be difficult. You know, it'll probably be an easier situation to get the ball in here. Just back it, step that way a little bit. Okay. 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 Now, first thing is, is you can step to the ball right along the foul line here. You just kind of like, you just kind of walk away. Okay. Just walk away. And on that step, the two steps, you're coming back. You're going to come stand here. Here's off you go. You're going this way. And you're going right around. That's the first look, and you're sprinting to the deep corner. Okay? But as you turn there, you're looking. That's the first look. That's all over you. Okay? You can go there. First look. Okay? You've got a high target now. So any up pressure situation, you've got the four guy here. Big target. High target. No bounce pass here. Okay? So off you go. Okay? As that movement's happening, you're pinning down. Just as he loops around, you are pinning down there. You are lifting up three. And then, good. Okay, and then get to the short corner, five. Short corner. Short corner. There. Yeah. Okay. Pass the ball here. <coughs> High target. Come back and get it on the handoff. Now, he jams you. You go up scene. It's a lot, right? Or you just go in handoff. Okay, and now here I go. Now, as you set that screen, now you're going to fall. You follow even with this elbow. So you're trailing me even with the elbow. So you can't be lagging and just walking. You gotta be moving quick enough to be, and I'll show you why later. Okay, so now you can flatten out a little bit and you come straight up. No, loop up, loop in, and straight up. Okay, stay, stay back here. Okay, stop. Okay, you wanna set it right around here. Okay, and you're gonna, you're gonna set a screen straight up here on this side. You may have a situation where you can S screen, so you can open up your right hand, if you're strong in the right hand, so you can come up, you can come up on this side and you can open and turn this way and you can just open here. And then we've got shooter in the corner, so we've got penetration, kick action, and you're always going front rim. So after your up screen here, your screen you get here, you're gonna just open and you're going hard front rim. Hard front rim. Okay? Now, as that happens, you take the ball. Your trailer, you're gonna get to the corner, yeah? Okay, wait, stay there. Good. Flat out. You're on the bend. Now you always start underneath the bend. Now. Now, I don't want you guys too close together. See the bend there? Where the, the straight line and where it bends. That's where I want you. Okay? So now you can space out and lift depending on what's happening defensively on the action. But the first thing is getting the spacing. Okay? I don't want one guy guarding two of you. There. Okay. So we get in here. You turn the corner. You're going front rim. Walk through it. You don't have to bounce it. Pick it up, okay? Walk through it, front rim. Now, as that's happening, you gotta come right in behind here. Hard in behind here. Hey, last possession situation, everyone's gonna get compact. Everyone's gonna draw it, get hard to the level of the ball. Need another passing. So you get down here, nothing here, nothing front rim. Okay, you got two options. You're looking in, you're looking out. Okay, these ones you can see, okay? But we gotta drill this one, boom, right in behind it, you gotta get a shot right there. Okay, so you come right inside, you get a good pivot, you can't get all the way to the rim, just know that you've got that option in behind you, okay? Come back here. Okay, first, first thing is, we'll run it, okay? Go penetration, after the screen, penetration, kick, three point shot. Okay, that's the first, the first, huh? two. what? From the two. two in the corner, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. And you got to 
rebounding situation. Okay? Good. Okay, come back. Okay, jog it back. Here we go. Second, second, second option. Turn the corner. Right? Find your roll guy. Five guy. Roll into the rim. Get a high target. Rolling in. You roll. Roll in. Just outside. Outside that. This side of the rim. Okay? In a compressed high target, right? You gotta see it. You gotta open that vision up. It's just up there. It's a nice little pass there. You get a score. Okay? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay. Go back again. Let's go. Jog it back. Let's go. Good. All right. Third. Just look at third option. Get in deep. Defense, is co defense collapses to the, to the level of the ball and the penetration. You got your foreman coming in behind. And shorten the distance, shorten the distance of the pass, and get ready to work off the catch. You got a shot or you're working, you're working off the of one, two dribbles, layup, or one, two dribbles, pull up, jump shot. Okay? <clears throat> go, go. Go, stop. Okay? Alright, defense, let's go. Let's go. Hey, biggest thing, hey, hey, point guard, biggest thing is when you when you go, okay, you just look at the three options, but you've got to open up your vision. You know, you may have, if there's a big deep collapse here, you know, you gotta look up, you look in, you look in, and then you look out. Okay? Here we go. And this is all, this is, this is just basketball, okay, and this is what can happen, but what I like is that there's movement by everybody, and that it create, you're creating this space immediately, you're not just static in one place, there's movement, all four players, all five players, well, all four players have movement before our point guard gets the ball back in his hand, okay. Here we go, come on defense. Questions about that? Okay. We'll move on. Okay. Hey, it's a good job, guys. Okay. Hey, blue, you step off. Okay. All right. Hey, last possession situation. Means man to man. Okay. We'll start. Start here. We're just going to half court. We'll go to this basket. You have point guard here. Point guard here. Okay. Four. Four in the five, four over here, five on here. Possession situation against man. So again, we talked about um, you know a lot of teams will just create one-on-one -on -one situation. They'll just be static. Other four players aren't involved. Aren't involved in the action. So I'm just going to show you something that I've done 
you know, to get everyone involved. You know, it helps if you've got three perimeter players that can make a play. You know, they can shoot the ball, they can penetrate, can read the defense, but we'll do the best, we'll do the best that we can here. So with this, in terms of we got the deployment, now the timing. So what we want to start, we want to start it at about seven seconds. So you know, we'll talk about, we'll go, when we do the five on, five on zero scripting, we'll start in the backcourt, and I'll be like, okay, last possession. Okay, we'll call this shirt pull, okay? Short pull, okay? And I'll say, I'll count down if I don't have the shot clock, I'll just verbalize, I'll just go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We begin at 7. We'll start the action at 7, okay? So here, I'll be here, okay? At 7, I'm getting eye contact on my pinch post guy, I'll be 4, okay? He's got to be able to make the right play, okay? He's got to be able to be able to hand the ball off, set good screen, make himself available, and be able to operate above the elbow. That will help a lot, okay? So now, on seven, you're gonna break up. You start, start, you start down on the, on the bend. Start on the bend. Yeah, there. So that, so now, if you start, if you start this action with the wing player, even with the foul line extended, what will happen is defense will get compact, so I can guard there, and I can guard elbow, okay? And then maybe I can, you know, I can dig my hand in there. So you gotta create